Joining us is Seth Porges. He uh, is an associate editor of Popular Mechanics magazine, and he has been patiently waiting uh, to talk about the iPad. You know, Seth, I think first of all we have to ask, after all of the run-up, after hearing that the, there were good sales numbers this weekend, what now? Well, right now, Apple has a couple tasks on their hands. They have to get developers to really steamroll and create kind of a shadow economy based around the iPad. They've done a really great job over the past couple of years of making this billion dollar industry around applications for the iPhone, and they need to duplicate that success for the iPad. Second thing they're doing is they're creating an entire new computing category, and their goal is to both create it and dominate it at the same time. What they want to do is create this thing and scare everybody else away. But Seth, is there a, is there a concern that everybody's putting their eggs in one basket here. There is, but in many ways that's not bad for consumers because oftentimes you have a problem of things just not working across different platforms. You buy an application on one computer, it won't work with the other. If there's only one dominant platform, in some ways it helps consumers. In the other ways, consumers don't have choice. And obviously choice is a good thing for many consumers. Well, you talk about the domination that yes. Apple is hoping for here. Apple's had it largely with the iPad, uh, with the iPod, excuse me, for example. The iPhone, of course, has competitors other yeah. smartphone competitors. So do you think they're going to be able to succeed in this category? There are other competitors that are going to be coming out. Absolutely. HP in particular has a new product called the Slate, which is probably going to come out around the summer. We don't know exactly when. And you can bet a lot of other companies are working on similar tablets right now. And their task is going to try to be to find whatever the weaknesses are in the iPad and exploit them and try to get it cheaper than the iPad. Seth, is this priced right? Have you heard some concerns about how much it costs? Well, it's easy to say it's expensive because it's above the threshold of an impulse buy. But if you look at what goes into it, I think personally it's pretty fairly priced. Consumers have kind of a distorted sense of what gadgets cost. Because when you buy a cell phone, you get a contract. And that contract comes with a subsidy that makes the phone much cheaper and actually costs AT&T or Verizon to sell it to you. There's no contracts with the iPad. So the fact that it's just 500 bucks, in my opinion, isn't that bad. Well, I want to get back for a moment to the competition here as well, because does it give HP an edge? As you say, if they're going to try and exploit the weaknesses, I'm guessing an, AP, an HP slate will have flash, for example. Yes. Maybe you'll have multitasking, some of these other things that people have pointed to as weaknesses. I mean, won't that, especially if they're beating the next generation iPad, won't that give them an edge? Maybe, maybe not, because you can view these things as weaknesses, but Steve Jobs views them as strengths. So yes, it doesn't have flash, yes, it doesn't have multitasking, but those things come with a price. Well, Steve Jobs doesn't view them as strengths, but, <laughs> I mean, views them as strengths, yeah. but what about consumers? Well, he knows everything. No, um, and the main problem slates from companies like HP are gonna have is they're gonna be using operating systems such as Windows 7 or Android, which are really developed for desktop computers or for mobile phones. And Seth, in our last 15 seconds, they're working overtime to crank these things aren't out, aren't they? They yes. have to meet the demand here. And nobody like Apple has developers on their side pumping out applications specifically for the products. That's huge. Seth Borges of Popular Mechanics, associate editor, joining us, the most patient man in America. Thank you so much for sticking with us through Tiger's press conference and our chats with Michelle and Mike. Thanks so much. Seth. Thanks again.